You can imagine my excitement when I found out over Christmas that I was now a proud owner of a PlayStation 5. Look at it. It's magnificent. Just like my sponsor, Squarespace. Sure, the packaging may look a little different. Lexibook TV console, it says. 200 games, 32 bits. I presume this is just foreign packaging because that is unmistakably a PS5. Even if it's a little smaller in real life than I expected. And the packaging is not quite what I expect from Sony. On the rear, we've got a USB-C power connector, modern technology, an AV out, an HDMI out, and for that 4K goodness, and a switch to select between the two. Now, interestingly, one thing Sony have opted to do is change the controllers completely. We get two in the box, which is nice, but rather than the magnificent PlayStation controller we've become accustomed to for over 20 years, there's now this shiny, plasticky, remote-type slab with a fixed wrist string attached to the end. Reminiscent of perhaps a Wii remote or something you'd find on one of those Wii clone consoles which emerged in the noughties and had that limited crap motion sensing ability. You know, the type released by Cat Games and the like. But this couldn't be that. Look at that familiar PS5 banana split design. It's unmistakable. Anyway, power and reset buttons on the front and we are away. And the intro seems a bit different to what I'd expect. Ah, here's what I'm talking about. A completely redesigned interface for 2020. This looks easier to digest than Paris Hilton's resume. It seems Sony have decided to group titles under Motion Sports, Puzzle, and Classic, which seems a bit odd, but I'll go with it. Also, we seem to have a lot of built-in games, so I presume we've got at least a terabyte of hard drive space whirring away in that tiny shell. Modern technology has advanced so much. Let's give Happy Parkour a go. So one or two player options and we are in. The idea here seems to be running down a road whilst evading the fuzz. Presumably if you play as the white character you get an instant advantage. You can jump over obstacles by pressing up, dive and roll by pressing down, and use left and right to navigate the course and collect coins. Momentum is maintained by constantly shaking the controller to activate the motion sensor, which is an interesting experience to say the least, and it doesn't take a lot to reach maximum velocity. Admittedly, it's more fun with two players, but you can shake your way single-handedly through all three courses if you have the time, energy, and, well, masochistic tendencies. The first to the end is the winner, which completely negates the need to collect coins in the first place. Still, you can try and get a high score if you're playing single player. Now, I can't imagine you'd ever get bored with this game, but if you do, then there are plenty others to choose from. And yes, if you're curious, I'm actually going to maintain the pretense that this is a real PS5, but just a bit longer, because I'm a tit. Talking of tits, here's a website I knocked together using my sponsor, Squarespace. Maybe you're a Twitcher or you have a hobby or business that doesn't have the best web presence. Well, Squarespace is absolutely marvelous at streamlining the process into a few straightforward clicks. This front page took me about five minutes to put together. Admittedly, I bought some stock images to make it, but this is just an example, and clearly you can do better. Email campaigns, SEO tools, mobile sites, all this and more with a few clicks. Head to squarespace.com slash nostalgia nerd for 10% off your first website or custom domain. First serve. 
tennis seems fairly competent and playable. You don't actually have to move your character at all. Just swing the remote to hit the ball and your player moves directly to it. You can't really fail. It's a nice touch Sony have added in. The complete removal of any actual gameplay, it's a really progressive feature, and I like the direction they're headed. Games were becoming too difficult anyway. Another interesting feature is the motion controls themselves. Whereas devices like the Wii had a fairly advanced motion tracking ability, Sony are a bit newer to this arena, and so you literally just get one motion action. Yes, a single motion sensing switch, meaning every flick of the wrist, gesture, movement, it's all interpreted as exactly the same input by the console. Really nice, keeps things simple and straightforward. None of this complication over the way you swing the controller actually being interpreted on the screen. I mean, who wants that? This means titles like Throwing Javelin work just as well as Ping Pong Tennis or Poke Bubble. Incredible titles, all of them. We also get a load of shooting games where the cursor is controlled using the D-pad with a shake of the entire controller to fire. It really adds an element of difficulty to proceedings, verging, you might say, on the unplayable. There's a lot of games here, some of which are more playable than others, but my very favourite has to be Catching Loaches. It's at this point that I thought Sony might be having a little bit of a laugh. I mean, you have to vigorously shake the controller to grab a handful of creatures, which then get tossed into a basket. But then I realised I'd witnessed this at the reveal event. In fact, a lot of the titles from the reveal event seem to be included. some look a little more, what shall we say, pissy than how they were presented, but then we've come to expect this. Manufacturers, developers always use pre-rendered non-gameplay footage, and it tends to look a little more watered down in real life, and that's what we have here. But I have to say, despite the tech packed into this product, rendering these graphics in real time, the console shell itself stays remarkably cool and quiet. Sony have really pulled out the impossible here. It's going to be quite a blow for Microsoft over 2021. I mean, look how blisteringly fast the backgrounds fly by in 100 meter running. You can't get that without the sheer unabated processing power contained within. In fact, there's a lot of running games on here. Some might say too many, but then they don't appreciate the excitement of differing distances. They also probably don't appreciate stellar 3D character modelling and excessively long arms. This is ultimately, though, their downfall. It's the same with mini soccer. I mean, who doesn't play football with their arms absolutely straight out to either side? Now, we've already looked at some of the puzzle games because a lot of them really don't seem to be puzzle games at all. Pig P Go Home is probably the best on offer here, and that only lasts for nine levels. Most of everything else you'd kind of describe as a thing. They're not quite games, more just experiences. Things you can say that you've been through. Even for the most die-hard Flash game fan. If there are fans of Flash games. Here's Children Horse or Wisdom Horse, whichever you prefer. So, apart from the Homer Simpson sound effects, I mean, what's going on? We've got music, we're collecting fruit and veg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why does she say lemon like that? 
And what about all these classic games? They look a lot like, well, I want to say Famicom style games, but, you know, surely, I mean, they have, haven't they? This, these are ripped off Famiclone games. Y you only have to look at the titles, let alone the gameplay. In fact, the more I got to grips with this console, the more I got confused by it. I tried to put a good spin on things to start with. I tried to stay, you know, positive. But this is all utter, utter shit. I mean, what the hell even is this lightweight piece of crap? It weighs less than a guinea pig. I've picked up heavier cat turds from my front garden. The controls, they feel filled with low-grade plastic, more than you'd expect in a 1990s Deu. I'm starting to actually doubt this is a PS5 at all, the more I go on despite the looks. In fact, research has led me to this console, the LexiBook 200 in 1 JG7420, released back in about 2011. It looks like some sort of budget Wii clone. The games look like they've had a shake-up. I bet your ass that they've just modified the exterior to look less like a Wii and more like a PlayStation 5. Yeah, I think I've got to the, uh, the root of the matter here. They slapped it in little, didn't they? Put a £35 price tag on it and they tried to con three-year-olds into thinking this is the real deal. Well, you're not fooling me, little or Lexibook. Nor are you fooling Steven on Twitter. Ye just copied the Wii. Your toy is shit. See? Even Steven knows. He wasn't even tricked by its fake PS5 outer skin either. Wait a minute. This tweet, it's from 2015. This console, this toy, this updated design actually came before the PlayStation 5 was even conceived. It came years before the PS5. Did Sony steal their blooming design from a discount store knockoff hack job of a console? Are you, are you actually, are you actually kidding me? This thing, this thing that looks so much, well, it looks a little bit like a PS5, has been knocking around since 2015 in this banana split style. Well, there's something you don't learn every day. And clearly Sony missed a trick with uh, the Cyber Arcade sticker. They should have copied that as well. Anyway, we're going to have to check what's actually inside this thing. And so, yeah, a whole lot of nothing. Sony certainly didn't take any cues from in here. We've got a board with a micro SD glued in place and the components covered with an incredibly flimsy metallic shield. But underneath that is our familiar G star or G plus Chinese microprocessor with the designation GPM 4530A. Similar to the one I found in that relatively modern VTEC machine a few months back. Well, I say similar, it's the same manufacturer. This is very likely a RISC processor wrapped up with a Linux based interface. But other than that, information on these chips seems very light on the ground. The SD card contains, well, it contains what you'd expect, a load of NES ROMs with the latest dated September 2020, interestingly. So this is very clearly an updated for 2020 model, shall we say. A load of graphics for the menus are also here, and a load of binary program files. So that's interesting. In fact, this whole thing is interesting. More interesting than it started off as. You know, this video began as a light-hearted video to welcome in 2021, but I honestly did not expect this design to have preempted the PlayStation 5. What a world we live in. What it lacks in ability, quality, fun, anything else, it clearly makes up for by being years ahead of the design curve. If you want one, then the discount retailer Lidl seemed to have stopped selling them again after Christmas, but you can grab one on Amazon UK for an absolute snip 
at £55. The link is below. Please don't click it. Do yourself a favour. Anyway, I guess that's it for this bizarre episode. Thanks for watching and have a great evening. Also, Happy New Year. <laughs>